Hello everyone, Turtleags here, bringing you another Reverse 1999 video. Today we are going to explore the follow-up archetype, specifically the follow-up Eureka archetype that is enabled by 37. As many of you know, the, uh, the bread and butter of 37's kit revolves around her Eureka, in which by accumulating five stacks of Eureka, she is able to consume those five Eurekas in order to cast Supplementary Formula, which is basically a very powerful follow-up attack. There are currently three characters in the game that are capable of supplying 37 with additional stacks of Eureka in the form of their own follow-up attacks. Uh, we have we have Miss New Babel as one example. The way she enables follow-up attacks is by entering her ultimate self-counter buff, in which when she after she casts her ultimate for the next two rounds, she is able to draw aggro from the enemy and every time the enemy attacks her she counters back with a follow-up attack and this generates eureka i should mention that this is actually the most unique way of generating eureka stacks for 37 because it is the only uh eureka generator that doesn't in that basically is capable of generating more than one eureka stack per action basically uh, you know, when we look at Lilia's kit, when we look at Kalabona's kit, both of them require you to cast their specific incantation or their ultimate respectively in order to cast one follow-up attack and thus generate one Eureka. But Miss New Babel's follow-up attacks are only limited by the number of attacks that the enemy deals to her. So it is entirely possible that you could generate two, three, four, or even five stacks of Eureka from one ultimate of Miss New Babel, which I think is what makes Miss New Babel the most interesting support for 37. And that's actually the first team that I want to showcase. I want to basically show you guys the viability of each one of these three follow-up archetypes, and we will have basically a control where I will feature these three follow-up attack teams and then see if it is able to compete with the likes of just a vanilla good stuffs team where you pair 37 with regulus with tooth fairy okay so let's go ahead and begin with the first follow-up follow team which will be 37 miss new babel and tooth fairy now one thing i need to mention regarding the side cubes is that miss new babel is the only follow-up attacker who actually also wants to use silent and adoring and this is kind of an issue because i just discovered yesterday that event side cubes such as luxurious leisure you can only have one copy per account uh and I can actually show it to you. Many of you may have discovered this already, uh, and this is a little bit unfortunate uh, because we don't have that many good side cubes for Miss New Babel. If I show you the side cube shop, yes. So as if I scroll down, you'll notice that it's limited. Basically, event side cubes you can only purchase one copy per game. You can amplify that side cube, but you cannot possess more than one of that limited side cube per account. So I just want to put that out there because. I think part of what will factor into the viability of these follow-up teams is is not only the synergy between 37 and that follow-up follow attacker, but also the side cubes that are available for each of these units. And unfortunately, we don't have another good alternative for uh, for this side cube, Silent and, and Adoring, for Miss New Babel, besides Thunderous Applause. And the reason for this is because all the other side cubes, they offer, they either require some sort of mechanic that Miss New Babel isn't able to enable, such as, you know, or isn't able to take advantage of, such as, you know, Ultimate Might doesn't matter for uh, Miss New Babel because her ultimate is a self buff. Uh, but not only that, uh, there's other side cubes as well that, yeah, most of these re benefit you in the sense that it. Uh, it boosts ultimate might, which Miss New Babel doesn't care about, or it requires some sort of mechanic uh, in order to uh, make the most of it, such as uh, Blasphemer of the night, night, you need to have the target have two or more negative statuses. And Miss New Babel, she's all about buffs, she doesn't inflict negative statuses, and um, there is one side cube that's coming out in the near future. It's a five-star side cube. I'll, I'll kind of overlay lay an image of it that actually boosts defenses and also increases the power of shields. Uh, so that will be coming up, and that will be Miss New Babel's best in slot. This unreleased five-star side cube, we, we need to wait for it. So uh, for the uh, sake of you know this 
this showcase, I'm going to run Miss New Babylon Thunderous Applause. She is able to make some use of it because even when she is on the counter build, uh, she is able to utilize the crit rate to a decent degree. With the Thunderous Applause, she does end up critting more than half of the time when you pair her up with, uh, with Tooth Fairy. So she is able to crit sometimes. Anyways, I digress. Let me go ahead and explain, explain the kind of rotations you can expect with this sort of follow-up team. So unlike the other two follow-up te follow teams with Lilia or with, say, Kalabona, the rotations actually depend more on the incantations that you start with. I would recommend that if you have more 37 incantations that you actually start things off by firing all three of 37's incantations just because in this sort of team, where it's 37 with Miss New Babel, Miss New Babel really is the sub DPS, and 37 is your main DPS, even though she is P0. So uh, I'm just going to, since we got three 37 incantations, I'm going to fire off all three. Just get the Eureka up as high as possible. And by the way, all of these teams are viable even if you have a P0 of 37. In fact, if you have a P0 of 37, you almost have to have one of these three supports, quote unquote, in order to maximize the uh, the kit of 37. All right, so next what I'm going to do, I do oh. see a potential line here. So one thing about, uh, about Miss New Babel is that for her level two old idea or higher, when she casts the incantation while she has a shield on her, she gains one moxie. So when you see an opportunity to fuse two old ideas together or fuse two of the, her buffs together, you can actually cast her buff, basically fuse, cast her buff, and then cast old idea in order to have her ultimate up on turn three. And it happens quite often, actually. So you'll, you'll see that after I cast this incantation, she'll have four, four moxie. But because I casted this level two incantation, Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I, I backtrack a little bit. You need a level 2 old idea, so if you don't have two of these old ideas, you can't quite get her ultimate up the following turn. Wow. But this Not is actually a perfect running. illustration of how you can get her so ultimate up. See? 5 Moxie, her ultimates are. I'm actually really glad the cards landed that way. That, that way I can show you a little trick to optimize the rotations of your team. Okay, so at this point what I want to do is go ahead and reshuffle. That way I can Basically, what I'll do is I'm going to fire off two of these incantations. We'll have five Eureka in order to cast the follow-up attack, and then I'm going to cast her ultimate. And the reason I do that is because if I have an opportunity to, to deplete all the Eureka stacks, I will do so before the ultimate starts to receive all those, um, all that incoming, all those incoming attacks. Okay, so you'll see what I mean. So two attacks, and then five Eureka stacks. She'll summon her ultimate, or I'm sorry, follow-up attack. Okay, now we have our ultimate up, and so I'm going to try to keep this ultimate up moving forwards. Okay, very good. So I generated two Eurekas just from the ultimate, and we still have the ultimate up buff up for one more turn. So you can do a number of things. Uh, in my case, I have a P5 uh, 37. So the rotation is actually even tougher for me because my ultimate is able to generate five Eureka. So my rotations are actually a little tricky. For you guys, it's even easier because you'll either have a P0 or a P337. Uh, and so in a situation like this, casting the ultimate right now to bring the Eureka up to four or five would be ideal. So um, let me think here how, how I want to do the rotations. I'm starting to think if I want to possibly get her ultimate up again next turn. And, and actually, I think I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to level up the old idea, right? Because when we cast her buff Aww. and cast the old idea, we'll have the ultimate up again. And then wow. we'll go ahead and cast our ultimate on 37. I'm just going to pretend I have a P0 or P3 uh, 37. This is basically how your rotations will turn out. Uh, turn, yeah, basically turn out and you'll see how it goes. Yep, so we got five, five Moxie on Miss New Babel. We'll be able to cast the ultimate. Just keep the ultimate up at all times to just continue to generate your Eurekas. Oh, ultimate worry. is up. This is good. And our previous taunt... Our previous self buff is still in effect, so Miss New Babel will fire back with a with follow up. Okay, and then another follow up. And then another follow up. So we gained three Eureka for that from that. And so this is beautiful because now I can cast an ult. Oh, I can't reshuffle. 
So um, this is unfortunate, maybe, actually not that unfortunate. Um, what I could try doing is, so ultimate, I could actually start topping off the HP of my characters and get, and start generating Eureka. Okay, so we're maintaining 100% maintaining ultimate uptime. Let's go ahead and heal so we don't have to worry about that next turn. Beautiful. Okay, so one follow-up attack. This will trigger the the, your, the five stacks of Eureka. Very good. Okay. So now, let me see what I want to do. Whenever possible, I like to fire off all three of 37's incantations if she gets it. Because at the end of the day, the bulk of our damage is from our Eurekas. Our, our follow-up attacks. You will pay for this. Good. Okay, now we trigger. So two more stacks of Eureka. Now the follow-up attack happens. Beautiful. Excellent. So I think we can wrap this up now. The final demonstration. Even that. So in a situation like this, like let's say you have a P0 or P337, you cast the ultimate in the situation first, and then another two attacks, and you could get very close to getting another follow-up attack off. And one thing you'll notice is that Miss New Babel's damage is actually pretty decent. Your first like, hand experience is our best advertisement. Our Miss New Babel is actually level 45 and resonate 10, as you saw earlier. And 37 did most of the damage, but notice how much Eureka Miss New Babel generated, right? She was able to generate, what, like 8 to 10 Eureka in the span of 6 to 7 rounds? Uh, maybe more than that, I haven't been counting, but, but that's pretty good. And, you know, Miss New Babel helped with some self-sustain, which in combination with Tooth Fairy only required us to heal once that entire uh, 7 rounds. So I actually like this team very much. It is the reason why I believe Miss New Babel is a very underappreciated unit, and I think with 37, uh, you know, being added to the roster, I think that both of them, Miss New Babel has basically had a breath of, of new life, essentially. I, I love this team, it's a lot of fun. All right, guys, now to showcase the second follow-up team, 37, Lilia, and Tooth Fairy. And many of you guys know already that this team is viable because some CN players like Devi Bull are running this team. And it's the rotations are actually very simple. I'll go ahead and show you. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how synergistic this team was and how easy the rotations are. Okay. So basically the idea is that with Lilia, her follow-up attack comes from this single target attack. Just remember the witch. Remember the witch? The only incantation you care about casting is the witch. Because at the end of the day, Lilia is essentially a Eureka generator. In the same way, Natsothabi is a poison generator, right? Uh, you won't really do anything else with Lilia besides casting Crosswind Takeoff. So, uh, and we always prioritize our 37 whenever possible because she is a sub DPS. Uh, 37 is a sub DPS, but Lilia, in a way, is kind of a sub DPS too. I don't think Lilia's damage is good enough uh, to be considered a main DPS. And mind you, I have a P3 Lilia, and her damage is still kind of mid. So what I'm going to do is I will use up all my 37 incantations followed by a a crosswind takeoff. This will generate three Eureka stacks for 37. The goal is to always generate at least three Eureka with 37 per turn. Okay, excellent. So what I'm going to do next, we'll have do two more along with another crosswind takeoff. I actually got really lucky with the way the cards landed. Uh, maybe half the time you will need to reshuffle at this point in order to have two uh, 37 incantations as well as another crosswind takeoff. And typically I like the splash damage to to hit the mobs and let the follow-up attack finish them off. Okay, very good. So same thing here, we're going to, so now we're going to ultimate, and in my case it, it'll bring my 37's Eureka from 0 to 5, but in you guys' case you'll mostly get it to like around 3 or 4, and then you cast another 37 incantation with another crosswind takeoff, and regardless of whether you get P0 or P2, or P3, I'm sorry, you will get one, another 5 Eureka trigger. In my case, I'm going to get a trigger and a half, essentially. Fine. Welcome to the world of numbers. So as you can see, the rotations are very simple. I don't really have to think that much. With, I think, the 37 Miss New Babble team, the thinking is a little bit more. It really depends on how the cards line up. Don't blink. 
And by the way, in case you guys are curious, when you have a fully invested Lilia that is partnered up with Tooth Fairy, you will have 100% crit rate the entire time. Uh, just in case you were wondering. And that's with Lilia on the Thunderous Applause. And, and by the way, you probably noticed that I haven't done a single thing with Tooth Fairy, and that is the goal, to not have to do anything with Tooth Fairy. Just let her baby tooth triggers keep your HP topped up, as well as, um, as well as shred the crit rate resist, as well as crit defense shred. I did try some more gimmicky um, playtesting with, say, instead of Tooth Fairy, a uh, mass mass ultimate support like Ann and Lee or Regulus that is capable of using her second life. That is something that I'm going to film a video on, uh, but I just wanted to, uh, I just mentioned that because Tooth Fairy really uh, makes a huge difference in, in these follow-up teams because the more act, the less actions you take with your healer, the more actions you have to generate your Eureka stacks because at the most you are generating, or the goal is to generate minimum three Eureka per turn. Sorry, I digressed there. So now we can go ahead and reshuffle our cards. Very good. Okay, so um, this is one of the few times where I will not cast the ultimate just because I really want to get those Eurekas off. Or the, the Eureka generated. So just remember the witch. The witch is the one that does the ball. Right wing. Very nice. Oh, don't worry. I have prepared it all. So as you can see, this is a very, a very potent team. I, I like this team a lot. I think with the introduction of 37, uh, Lilia and Miss New Babel have gained, have, have just become more relevant. Okay, so we got to reshuffle again. We're looking for 37's cards as well as um, Crosswind Takeoff. Excellent. So what I'm going to do, I will always try to get, try to basically cast all of your 37's actions before you even touch Crosswind Takeoff. And that's the way that I play. And we have an opportunity to generate another three Eureka. Don't blink. Don't blink. Very nice. So uh, six turn clear there. Okay, but what does it mean to us? So you'll notice I mean, that Lilia contributed about a little over 20% of the overall damage, whereas Miss New Babel generated, I want to say it was 15 to 18%. Miss New Babel's damage is actually surprisingly good. It's not that far behind Lilia, but Miss New Babel generates way more Eureka. Like Lilia was generating one Eureka per crosswind takeoff, whereas Miss New Babel generated multiple per ultimate, right? Uh, but you have to keep in mind, though, that you are casting more Miss New Babel actions to get to that ultimate. I just thought of that. So in the end, I guess it kind of uh, kind of balances out. All right, and then the last team that I wanted to showcase for follow-up teams is Colabona and, and 37, and this might actually be my favorite. It's my favorite just because Call of Bona deals more damage, and I think the priority becomes different. Now, all of a sudden, Call of Bona's damage will for sure be more than 37, and so for this reason, you're, the priorities will shift. You're going to prioritize Call of Bona's attacks whenever possible to get her ultimate off, which will generate a Eureka because her ultimate, Call of Bona's ultimate generates the follow-up attack. And this is actually the perfect opening. I didn't even plan for this. Whenever possible, you want to get to uh, Call of Bona's ultimate as quick as you Your can. So the rotations will be different. You're going to deplete all of Call of Bona's actions and then supplement that with 37's actions. Okay, very good. So um, what I'm going to do, I think this is probably the most optimal play. Although it just occurred to me her mass attack is a single target, so that was actually a, a misplay. But it's okay. Okay, we're taking a lot of damage here. Be faithful to the choice of fate. As expected, everything has its cause and effect. So, as you can see, I'm still prioritizing Colabona's actions even after casting her ultimate because we're trying to generate as much Eureka as possible with her ultimate while dealing a ton of damage. Okay. 
think now's a good time to heal. Let's just, let's just go ahead and do this since this will help with survivability, just getting 30 seconds of uh, follow-up attack to trigger. Oh, actually I was one off. That's okay. Alright. Be faithful to the choice of fate. Hmm. Everything has a cause and exactly. Fight it. It's happening. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I was like, the cards were so interesting the way they lined up, so... Uh... Uh, well, my 37's a P5, so her damage is pretty insane all around. But that's essentially how you would play a Colobona 37 team, and you'll notice that at this point, uh, Colobona's damage overtakes to overtakes 37. Um, but 37's damage is not that far behind, and a lot of it has to do with the way we were able to generate Eurekas from Colobona. I think Colobona casted two ultimates that entire rotation, but for you guys, you'll most likely get a third ultimate in. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much follow-up teams for you. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and you all have an, an amazing day. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.